Hiya there, fellas, and hiya there, gals. Here's one of your real DJ pals. He's the guy who spins your favorite platter. The guy who makes with a clever pattern. Let's give the boy a hand on your make-believe bandstand. Hi, I'm Jonathan Blair, your host for the best of Dave, Shelley, and the Chainsaw. And I'd like to take this opportunity to remind you, all sales are final. Please tell me about the joke, got to hear the joke of the day. Won't you let me know the joke right now? Thanks again to Leslie Wilson at uh, Kinko's for the second best all-time great joke about this businessman. Oh, yeah? He's at work one day. Uh Uh-huh. Decides, hey, I think I'll call home to the wife oh, okay. and see what she's doing. So he's dialed her up on the phone. Hello? Uh, yeah, hello. I'd like it, It's the maid. Oh, I see. Shelley, okay. My maid has answered. <laughs> I'd like to speak to my wife, please. I'm sorry. She's tied up right now. Well, it's very important. Can you tell her, please, to uh, come to the phone right away? Uh, I'm sorry. I just can't do that. Well, why? what's going on? Why can't she come to the phone? Oh, all right, all right, I'll tell you. She's in bed with the mailman. Oh. As you can imagine, the businessman gets very upset by this. Of course he does. I've had enough, says the businessman. I can't stand it anymore. This is what I want you to do. Yes? Go and get rid of the mailman. Okay. Then kill my wife. What? Then hide the body somewhere until I can get home. I'll hold on the line until you're done. Oh, okay. I'll be back in a minute. She goes to take care of these tasks for us. She's a dutiful maid. All right. That's <laughs> wow. Okay, then you got her. <laughs> and she comes back to the phone. <laughs> got to get her on uh, neutral system. I, I did what you told me. Did you get rid of the mailman? Yes. Did you kill my wife? Uh, yes. Did you hide her body till I get home? Yes, I put her in the pool. The pool? Yes, the pool. Is this five 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 four eight six five? Sorry, wrong number. Sunny today, 79 by the water. Come on in. Yeah. <sighs> Operation Rock and Roll. Mm-hmm. My idea, oh, deputy yeah, right. program yeah, director right. Barney Five. Hey, uh, say, uh, Barney, were you ever in the armed forces? Well, uh, yeah, I organized the Mayberry Militia, you know. <laughs> That would qualify you as a reservist, then, would it not? Well, I guess, technically, yeah, you're right, yeah, it would. Well, you're out of uniform, soldier. What do you mean? You're a hair, private. Private? It's Commander Fight. Oh, Commander Fight. Commander. Fight. In the chair, you need a Marine buzz cut, pal. Now, hold on, Rickards, Rickards, Rackets, Rackets. 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 I'll have you know my hair is well within regulation. Not enough for us. Come on, Shelly Young, Christopher, yeah. let's hold him down. Let's hey, hold him down. Hey, hey. Look at him there. Get your hands off me. What is, what's get going in there. on? Get in the hey, hey, stuff him in there. What? All right, Floyd, get in here and do what? your stuff. What? Oh, yeah, that. I'm ready. <laughs> what? Ooh, Floyd Lawson, yeah, what are you yeah. doing here? Mm. Just snap that. What? Does the term marine buzz cut ring a bell? Oh, no. Get your hands we call off we me. call it a butch at the barber shop. Yeah. <laughs> Only a dollar twenty five. But for you, Barty, it's Get free today. Get your hands off! Oh. Hey. 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 Oh. Hey. Oh. Hey. oh, just coming right off. Oh. Sorry, I nicked your ear there, buddy. Get a band-aid, Christopher. Ooh. Oh, good one. Boy, I'm going to tell you something. I know you're behind this, Rickards, Rickards, Rackets, Rackets. Yeah. I'll get you. 101 KGB FM. It's Roseanne Barr. And Cookie Chainsaw Randolph is my favorite sportscaster. No, I'm not going to do that. Oh, come on. I'll just do the one I just did. Say oh, the one on. that Cookie is your favorite sportscaster. 101 KGB FM. Yeah. It's Roseanne Barr. All right. All right. All right. All right. 721. Chainsaw's here sports. Good morning. Good morning. Hello again, everybody. The Chargers did not lose yesterday, but they didn't play either, which is better than you can say for the 1-12 New England Patriots when they had their Sunday off a few weeks ago. The bye was favored. That's pretty bad. In other games played yesterday, uh, two overtimes, uh, 49ers WKRP Cincinnati, and the Dolphins squeaked past Philadelphia. Elsewhere in the league yesterday, Phoenix over New England, Steelers over the Jets, Minnesota over Chicago, and finally, somewhere, 
over the rainbow. Dorothy went 22 for 31, passing for 278 yards. Toto, 170 yards on 19 carries. Flying Monkeys played a swarming defense. Scarecrow, three sacks. Lollipop kids all over the field. And oh yeah, the Wizard went down with a knee injury. He'll have arthroscopic surgery later today. Another down note, steroids were found in the Tin Woodsman's oil can, so he received a lifetime suspension from Commissioner Paul Tagliabue, which in NFL standards means he'll be back in uniform next week. <laughs> in other sports, David? Okay, Roseanne, say read your newspaper. No, I'm not going to do oh, that. come on, say read I'll your... just do the one I just did. Oh, no, on. say the part about read your newspaper. 101 KGB-FM. It's Roseanne Barr. It's no help from anybody. 7.23 and 56 seconds. This is the 101 KGB Board Oh, my. Board tonight? Call the party line. 176 Party. 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And talk to other horny teens just like yourself. I'm going to have fun tonight. I'm going to call the party line and talk to hordes of glamorous people and cute guys. Hi, my name's Judy. I'm 5'11". I weigh 100 pounds and my measurements are 36, 23, 36. And I'm 14 and I like Metallica and blue eyes and I want to be a model and study surfing in Hawaii. What do you look like? Well, my name is Vern and I'm really, you know, neat looking and stuff like that. And I like to stay in my room and where it's really dark and I like to play with my fishes and stuff like that. And I like Pop-Tarts. <laughs> Party line. Just $4 a nanosecond plus toll, if any. And there will be. Be sure not to tell your parents. 101 KGB FM, nine minutes before nine o'clock. Chainsaw, you swear that the Chargers are going to win? Absolutely. There, there's just no chance that they won't. Sports Illustrated, jinx in reverse. Burt Grossman on the cover. Yeah. They've been losing. Now they're going to win. All right, well, I'm going to put my bacon on the line then since I have your guarantee. We're going to call a uh, New York restaurant. It's in, how do you say this, Chris? Nyack? Nyack. Nyack, New York. Nyack, New York. Nyack, New York. It's up in the Hudson River Valley, upstate. We'll yeah. make them a bet. A little bit upstate. Jets and the Chargers. That's right. The New Jersey Jets, they play in the Meadowlands. Oh, Hilltop. Good morning, the Hilltop Restaurant. Yeah. Hey, uh, hi, it's Dave Rickards calling from KGB Radio in San Diego. Yeah, what do you want? <laughs> <laughs> Who is this? Who's this? I said it's Dave in KGB San Diego. Who's this? Huh? Who is this? Johnny. Johnny. Yeah. Are you a Jets fan, Johnny? Sometime. If they win, I'm a Jet fan. If they lose, I'm a, 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 a I'm an Oakland Raider. Right. Yeah, right let's yeah, let's yeah. let's make a little wager, you and me, Johnny, because my Chargers are coming to your town. And we're going to play this weekend. So what do you say? You and I make a bet on the game, and then Monday morning, I'll call you back, and we'll see who has to pay up. No cash involved or anything like that. Just a little stunt. What do you say? Dave, I don't gamble, Dave. Huh? Right? Well, it's, it's <laughs> the Lord to gamble. Huh? There's no, no money involved. Yeah, right. Huh? What? No, no cash involved whatsoever. Uh, so what's the gimmick? Huh? Well, what do you do there at the restaurant there, Johnny? What? I what? sit down all day long and watch my cash register. Yeah. <laughs> All right, good. Great All right, here's the deal. Here's the bet, Johnny. Go ahead. We got a special bet here at KGB, okay? Yeah. This is always our standard Dawn Patrol bet. The loser has to wear his underwear outside his pants for the whole morning. Wait, you some kind of a friggin' nut out? <laughs> or what? Come on, Johnny, take the bet. Come on, Quit pulling my chops. Up. I'm not, I'm not <laughs> pulling your chops. I swear to God, Jesus. I've lost the bet. Yes. I've I've had to I've had to go through this and wear my True. underwear yep. outside my trousers. Wait now you know that. the Jets. Hey, if a... that turns you on, then there's... <laughs> <laughs> no, it doesn't turn me on. It's humiliating, but that's the fun. It's betting on sports. It's a good time. It's what guys do. Come on, Johnny, take the bet. Uh, what am I going to get out of it? Well, if I lose, I have to wear my underwear outside my yeah. pants. Well, then, uh, I mean, like I said, if it turns you on to wear your underwear outside of your pants, then wear your underwear all week out there out of your pants. <laughs> Come on, Johnny. Yeah. Take what the you, bet, John. Pay for, huh? Johnny, take the bet. Oh, I'll see you. I got to go, okay? Oh, whoa. Johnny, you're letting me down here. Okay. Right, right. Whoa. I'll take care of you, okay? Johnny, it's a bet then, right? No, it isn't, baby. All right, Johnny, I'm going to call you Monday. When your Jets lose, you'd better have your BBDs outside your slacks. What are you, got too much money or something or what? <laughs> Johnny, just say it's a bet, Dave. Uh -huh, you must have too much money. You don't know what to do with yourself, you know? Take care, huh? Have fun, okay? Oh. Right, bye now. See you. Bye. Ooh. Too much time on your hands. Jeez. <laughs> I say it's a bet. I think he took the bet. I think he did, too. I think, I think he was just teasing I think that. right at the end there, he was he was uh, tipped over the edge. So we'll call him on Monday when yeah. our Chargers win and see if, indeed, Johnny's wearing his skivvies outside the slats. You closed him, Dave. Oh, yeah. 
And now, live via satellite on 101 KGB-FM with a wrap-up on the greatest movies for 1990. And TV shows. And TV shows. Here is Jules Hypenstein. <laughs> Thanks for reminding me. Morning, Jules. I am so excited about bringing to you Jules Hypenstein's Year in Review 1990, my favorite movies and TV shows of the year. First, my three favorite television shows of 1990. First, a canine hospital experiment goes horribly wrong in Doogie Schnauzer, M.D. (laughs) Fred Savage spends his childhood underneath his mother's hoop skirt in the under years. (laughs) And I loved, I absolutely adored the episode where Andy Griffith got constipation in Buttlock. (laughs) That's a good show, I like that one. Now for the movies. Harrison Ford starred as a lawyer who couldn't sustain an objection in (laughs) Presumed Impotent. (laughs) Love that film. (laughs) Tom Cruise as a hotshot stock car driver who had trouble sitting down in the summer hit Days of Thunderoids. (laughs) (laughs) Leonard Nimoy as a Vulcan prize fighter. Spocky Five. Yes! (laughs) Richard Gere as a tough private eye in the remake of the Humphrey Bogart classic, The Maltese Gerbil. And perhaps my favorite Jules. Hello. And perhaps my favorite film of 1990, Johnny Depp as a strange young man who gets a job in a vasectomy clinic. Yes, Edward Snipperhand. <laughs> there they are. Jewel Typenstein's favorite movies and TV shows of 1990. Happy holidays from Hollywood. Bye-bye. Folks, we en- hope you enjoyed those movies and TV shows. And Jules, you just take this moment to say what a great job you've done oh, servicing yeah. us this year Thank the gossip you. from Hollywood. So much. Look forward to talking to you in the new year. Love your show. You're fantastic. Morning, KGB. <laughs> Dude, what's going on? This is Dan out at Pacific Beach. <laughs> hey, have you got your underwear on your head, though, this morning? Yeah, yeah. Happy New Year, dude. <laughs> Same to you, pal. Excellent going on hey my friend lee this dude i hang out with is like 50 years old and really smart Mm -hmm. yeah (laughs) okay yeah Yeah, he wants to talk to you about new year's resolutions or is it already you know like too late in the week and totally uncool no of course you can yeah excellent hey lee says it's cool he wants to talk to you hello hello is this the radio and whatnot yes sir i think new year's resolutions are a bunch of crap (laughs) last year i resolved to go out with Barbara Walters, and it never come true, so I wound up on New Year's Eve just a, just a ball of frustration and mm. personal failure and mm. whatnot, oh. and don't go telling me I've set my sights too high and whatnot, I've seen Barbara Walters on the TV show, and she's talking directly to me and so sure. forth, it's the way she looks into the camera, she's talking directly to me and whatnot, but I know it's true. I've gone up to complete strangers on the boardwalk, probably a hundred of them and so forth, and not one of them said they thought Barbara Walters is speaking directly to them and whatnot. <laughs> so I've decided if, if she wants me, let her come down to Pacific Beach. It's a two-way street and so forth. I figure if she wants to go on national TV proclaiming her desire for me and whatnot, she can just go ahead and get her foot down here so we can take care of business, get married and whatnot, and spend the rest of our days up in the pit house, up in New York City and so forth. What do you say to a guy who's already blown a gasket when he here, blows another one? Here's the boy. I think he's cracked a block. <laughs> cool. Not the sharpest tool in the shed. And he's so wise. I know. Oh, yeah. All right, dude. See you, pal. Later. Hi, this is Jim Laslovic, and whenever Lee Hamilton, Pat Kern, and I are up in the Chargers broadcasting booth, and we get kind of stuck for something to say, we all think, what would Cookie Chainsaw Randolph say in this situation? And then we say the exact opposite. Time to talk to the original good sport. Here's Cookie Chainsaw Randolph. Well, thank you very much, Dave Rickards, and hello again, everybody. Well, the San Diego Chargers sent a message throughout the National Football League yesterday, and that message was, hey... We're capable of winning a football game now and again. <laughs> yeah. 24-14 over the Browns. Quarterback Billy Joe Tattler overcame a shaky start to throw two touchdown passes to Anthony Miller. Marion Butts, 90 yards rushing. The defense was outstanding. Coach Dan Henning's hair was excellent. All in all, a 
banner day for the Chargers, who are now 1-2. and two. The Raiders lead the division now. They're 3-0 and oh after pantsing Pittsburgh 20-3. Chargers host Houston this coming Sunday. Elsewhere around the NFL yesterday, 12 other games were played, and 12 teams won. And still checking, 12 teams were defeated. All right. You know, to make it simple, sports fans, rather than take up all that time running through the scores, we've devised a simple formula to provide all of yesterday's results without taking up precious morning time with elaborate details, many of which you may have already seen over and over and over again on the various sports programs yesterday. So as a time saver for your early Monday morning get ready for work or school or whatever routine, uh, you know, brushing your teeth, uh, shaving, uh, uh, putting on makeup, here it is, okay? All NFL teams whose home city begins with a vowel lost in today. Both teams beginning with the letters M lost. Both teams beginning with San won. And of course the rest of the teams either lost or won yesterday. Tonight, Buffalo visits the New York Jets. And did you know only four NFL teams play in state capitals? I'm still trying to think of the other San team. Francisco. Oh yeah. Duh. Yeah. <laughs> oh, them. Four teams play, yeah, one of the smaller, <laughs> insignificant ball clubs. Duh. Only four NFL teams play in state capitals. Can you name them? Uh, Denver. One. Denver. Denver and Denver. Yeah. Phoenix. Phoenix. And Annapolis. <laughs> yeah. And Atlanta. Ooh. The rest are all in smaller towns. Yeah. New York. Not the big, t not the big, like Albany, New York, shockingly, does not have an NFL team. Yeah. And other sports. Ask that guy in the mail room. At 23 and 10 seconds, this is the 101 KGB and that Sports Network. Oh, my. The 101 KGB FM Dawn Patrol is more than just great rock and roll and cheap laughs. It's a place for love to grow. Take, for example, the morning Dawn Patrol Commando Tom called Dave Rickards with the news that he and his girlfriend Sonny had broken up. Dave suggested he call Sonny and sing her a love song. Yesterday is just a memory, and we close the door. I just made one mistake. I didn't know what to say when you called me, baby. But sometimes love doesn't always have a happy ending. Any chance you two might ever get back together again? No. No. <laughs> but given the fact that this is a personal matter between Tom and Sonny, Dawn Patrol listeners refused to take sides. That is so cool. The guy pours his heart out. I know. She dumps him like that? What a rag. There was no <laughs> immature name call. Tell him he doesn't need to go like that. <laughs> In fact, one listener offered advice to help mend the relationship. Yeah, I think he was singing the wrong song. Man, he should try Cold as Ice by Foreigner. Yes, once again, Dawn Patrol listeners have proven love is a many splendored thing. Be part of the warmth and tenderness with the Dawn Patrol. Mornings on 101 KGB FM. Oh, man, what a rag. What a rag. <laughs> All right. Hi, I'm Larry Bud Melmore from Late Night with David Letterman. I never listen to the Dawn Patrol because they suck. <laughs> well, you remember on Friday we called uh, Nyack, New York. Mm hmm. Home of the, which is, uh, by the way, just outside of uh, New York City. Oh, okay. Home of the uh, Hilltop Restaurant, where Johnny sits by the cash register and is a Jets fan. Yeah. Well, we made a wager with him. Actually, no one here is brave enough except for Dave to go on a wager, especially when it involves wearing underwear outside your pants if you lose. So I went on that wager with him, and mm -hmm. uh, he took, of course, the Jets, and we went in there and killed. We killed this yes, weekend. Yes, we did. Yes. And now Chargers, we all have yes. a phone call, and you know he's not going to be wearing his underwear outside his pants. Yeah, he, was, he was hesitant to accept your wager. There's no, he won't even want to talk to me. <laughs> He'll be a crab on he National Crouch Day. He'll be good and crabby. That'll be fun. Johnny in New York. Give him a hard time. Hello, is Johnny there? Who is it? It's Dave at KGB in San Diego. What's his name? Sonny, hold on. Sonny, oh, wait, wait, are you still there? Mm. The boy from San Diego. <laughs> the boy from San Diego. Hello? Hey, you. What? You better have your underwear outside your pants. Who's this? It's Dave at KGB San Diego. Duh, don't you remember the bet that we made on Friday? We didn't make no bet, Dave. Yeah. This is not House of Brothers, is it? <laughs> 
<laughs> no, it's it's Dave in San Diego. Who Get the hell out of here. Tell Jimmy you uh, uh, Hey, hunt, hey, hunt, tell Jimmy when he comes in, he, hey, I'm, I'm not going to have no pants on today. <laughs> now, wait a minute, who's wow. Jimmy Hauser? I, I, I just tell Jimmy we're going to go topless. Okay, topless and bottoms are behind the bar, okay? No, no, wait a minute, I swear to God, I, uh, okay. I, I don't know who you're talking about, but you lost the bet, pal. Your Jets stunk up the joint this weekend. Huh? You're supposed to be wearing your underwear outside your pants. No, I'm, I ain't going to wear no pants. I'm going to uh, I'm going to go bottle in the south here today, okay? All right, hey, I didn't want to do this, but here it goes. You are a weenie. Oh, okay, my. but tell okay, tell Jimmy Hauser, okay? No, who is Jimmy Hauser? You know who Jimmy Hauser is. I swear to God I don't. Oh, I'm busy as hell, and I got a big lunch going on. I got 150 people in there, and they all want to pay their check, and I got to get out sure by the cash. They're there because they want to see you wearing your underwear outside your pants. I got to go by the cash register. Okay, nice nice talking to you, Dave, okay? I don't know Jimmy Hauser. Say hello to Jimmy Hauser, okay? No. <laughs> He's gone. Oh, well, he certainly was a grouch. He lived up to that reputation. Who is Jimmy Hauser? <laughs> Bring me the head of Jimmy Hauser on a plate. <laughs> the Dawn Patrol. Dave Rickards, Shelly Dunn, and Cookie Chainsaw Randall. Oh, what, 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 oh what, what, yeah, I know. Uh, yeah, I know. But, but, yeah, okay, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Why you get me involved? You know, you, you, you know, you can... Uh, Come on, you know, I mean, uh, you're at the radio station. 101 KGB FM. Holly came from Miami. That's in Florida. Uh, thought she was James Dean for a day. I hate sausage. But she never lost her head. Even when she was giving it. She said, She said, Hey, club nose! Take a walk on the wild side! And, uh, I lost my place. Oh, yeah, and the color girls go. Get down, Cool, baby. Go with it. Uh... Thanks, Bull Whip. Uh, you can go. We'll, uh... Bull Winkle! Uh, thanks. We'll, we'll call you. I thought it was pretty good. I'm Danny Valor, and I'd like to pay tribute to a band I did quite heavily. Here's a medley of Aerosmith's greatest hits. I think that dude looks like a lady. I'm talking about sweet emotion. Like a cheerleader at a high school dance, he walked this way. And wound up having love in an elevator. Hey, going down, Mr. Tyler. <laughs> oh, aren't I sensational? Come in. <laughs> oh, Jay Wade Stevens is here, folks. What's happening, buddy? Well, as a big-time talent manager, freelance sales executive, naturally, I've paid my dues at every kind of racket and manageable. Sure. Mm -hmm. In fact, I'm the one who got Chris Boyer started the insurance game. <laughs> Didn't know that. Remember, Chris? Yeah, I came up with a company that I thought would make us a million. Mutual of orgasm. I <laughs> never seem to get it together, though. I'll pay anything to be on that premium. Of course, Chris is still using some of my revolutionary uh, insurance innovations. Like? Like the $100 debatable. <laughs> I've had that. that allows the agent to talk his way out of paying a claim. Yeah. 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 And the J. Reed Stevens Health Insurance, where instead of paying for any necessary surgery, we provide a Swiss Army knife and a do-it-yourself instruction booklet. <laughs> oh, I need to get some of that. And I'm really proud of this. This is the, the coup de grace. This is my best innovation. Uh-huh. If you, the client, came down with yellow fever, the insurance company will repaint the bedroom so you won't clash with the walls. <laughs> <laughs> that is nice. Really nice. Good option to have. Yeah. yeah, that's the service. Instead mm -hmm. of the good hands, people, we make it economical by giving you only one finger. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Chris, we'll talk later, okay? Excellent, Jake. <laughs> In October of 1990, Dave and the Chainsaw got haircuts. I mean, buzz cuts. Almost bald. Are you ready to see some shaving? Yeah! Okay, who goes first, Dave or Chainsaw? Chainsaw! 
<laughs> Thank Dave, you. Dave, Dave. I, I paid them all off. The KGB lobby was filled with onlookers as Navy Barber Faye did her thing. Nearly $5,000 was raised for the Leukemia Society, and it all happened because one Navy dad didn't want his son to feel so alone. The story of Patrick Wilson may be one that you've heard before, but what struck me about it is the way that the family is dealing with it. Patrick is five years old and he has leukemia. And if you're familiar with cancer treatments like chemotherapy, you might know that a common side effect is that your hair falls out. And when you see this at first, it's shocking because it's a perfectly healthy looking human being, but without any hair. And it's different looking. And now five-year-old Patrick, who had lost his hair, has to go to school, a place where children can be so devastatingly cruel to other children who look different. Well, you can imagine the heartache a parent goes through when he or she realizes the teasing that their already tormented child will endure. Well, that parent would give anything to spare his kid any more pain. Well, then Navy Pilot Lieutenant Scott Wilson has an idea. He cuts off all his hair to show his son that it's not that big a deal. And he can say, see, I'm bald too, and we can do this part together. And suddenly the little boy isn't so different anymore. And I think it's that kind of loving gesture that makes guys like me, who hope to have kids someday, hope that they can be that good of a dad to their kids. Now, I've never met Patrick Wilson, but I know he's a cool little kid. And if he gets anything from this experience, maybe it'll be the ability to handle the crappy hands we are sometimes dealt. Because once you have faced an obstacle like this and gone through it like the rock he is, you can do anything. All right, I've had my say. What do you say? We have some fun and do what we set out to do and cut some hair. You ready, Chainsaw? Awesome, yes. Awesome. Give me a head with hair. Tell Long, beautiful yes. hair. Shining, gleaming, streaming. Black Folks, Back I don't wide. know if you remember him, but how about a big hand for the egghead from yeah. Batman, yeah. huh? Thank you so very much. And, oh, Faye is not done yet. Gosh, she yanked me back down. What do you got more to do up there? There's two long ones here. Oh, there's two hairs. Gosh. Wouldn't want that. Looks good. I look and feel terrific, don't I? How about a hand for Pinchard? All right, Dave Rickards is next. I am standing up. And now this is a single chair barbershop here at the KGB lobby. And Faye is ready to go with Dave. What do you think Dave's head is going to look like in about five minutes? I believe Jimmy Hoffa could be stuck inside that hair somewhere. <laughs> we will find Jimmy Hoffa in moments. There goes David! Yes. Oh, yeah! Hey, 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 hey. Let me ask Faye a question. Faye, does the three pound of, of, of moose that he put on cause any problem? No, I'm going right through it. <laughs> <laughs> Do I dare look? Yeah. You look like George McFly now with that side, <laughs> side of the hair there flapping over. Oh, boy. And there it goes. Yeah. It's gone. It's gone. Way back, way back. That hair is gone. It's out of here. Hi, this is Bob Costas, NBC Sports in New York, and whenever I'm in San Diego, I make it a point not to listen to, but to drop in on and seek the advice of my personal mentor, Cookie Randolph. Good morning, and hello again, everybody. Let's talk college basketball just for a couple of moments. Number three, Arizona, thoroughly destroyed Dave Rickard's alma mater, yeah. Western Illinois University. Yeah. The Wildcats, 90. The Flying Nimnods, <laughs> 51. Oh, oh, 39 oh, points. Hey, that's the closest we've come in years, though. Oh, wow. That's pretty good. Way to go, guys. <laughs> In other college hoops, as listed in USA Today, some of the more obscure schools here. Trenton State defeated your sinus, 82-70. Your sinus had an infection that lowered their natural defenses in that ball game. Kent State over Defiance, 93-74. Obviously, Defiance was not defiant enough. Oral Roberts beat the heck out of Pittsburgh State, 101-87. And then after the game, healed Pittsburgh State. Air Force defeated Regis. 71-66. Tonight, Air Force plays Philbin. Central Iowa, 62. Graceland, 42. No way. Which sends a 
shiver through Elvis fans everywhere. Oh, the man. buzzer went off on the King at 42 as well. Ooh. 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 <gasps> Queens University beat Converse. <laughs> 8572 weird sight all the players from Converse were wearing Nike's I don't know how they got that contract and other sports David watch ESPN at 722 and 29 seconds this is the 101 KGB FM sports and what oh my by the time the coffee's made Tom's this brown with marmalade you're tuned in for the escapade Funny stories, jokes, and grins. Man, so, so we, we could use more jokes for Dave to reach 17. That doesn't rhyme. Oh, stifle yourself, eat it. The Dillon Patrol on KGB. It's the only show for me. A cavalcade of comedy. Joke of the day. The joke, yeah. got to hear the joke of the day. Yeah. Won't you let me know the joke right now? Thanks to Paula Luttrell of Carlsbad for her story about this guy. Shelley is just sitting in a bar when a gorgeous, fabulous babe walks up. Hey, hey, hey! Sachets uh, plops her keister right down next to him on the bar stool. She leans over, and says, "Hey." Anything you want for 50 bucks. Ooh. He looks over, looks her up and down. She indeed looks fabulous, just as Dave had described. <laughs> and he says, anything? And she replies, yes, with a wink. But your request must be made in three words or less. The man decides to order another drink and ponder the proposition. Again, he asks, anything? Yes, the woman replies. As long as it's in three words or less. <laughs> as the man's glass is emptied, the man turns and hands the woman a crisp $50 bill. All right, says the lady. What's your wish? The man replies, paint my house. <laughs> Hi, this is Dr. Joris Brothers. Don't go away. Girl Talk is next with my role model, Dr. Tony Grunt, on 101 KGB FM. 101 KGB FM at 20... Ah! Let's put that anywhere. 21 minutes before 9 o'clock, the Dawn Patrol now welcomes into the studio uh... for Girl Talk. Here is Dr. Tony Grunt. Good morning. Well, thank you, David, and good morning, girls. This is Girl Talk. I am Dr. Tony Grunt. <laughs> And girls, our topic today is, if your love life was a weather report, what's the forecast? Mm. Our phone number is 570-1015. Let's go to our girls. Hello, Christy, hi, how are you? Oh, well, I'm okay. Super. Christy, if your love life was a weather report, what's the forecast here? It's been a drought. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, honey. It's okay. All well, right. What are you going to do about it, dear? Well, uh, hopefully it's going to rain this uh, weekend. Okay, well, good luck, okay? Uh, thanks a lot. Alrighty, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Hello, Susie. Hello. Hi, Dr. Tony. Ooh, here's our first boy buzzer. Oh, what do you mean? We love your show. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> Hello, Ooh. hello, Kim. Hi. Hi, Dr. Grunt. How are you today? Super. Super. <laughs> Kim, if your love life was a weather report, what's the forecast, dear? Well, Dr. Grunt, I would have to say it's stormy weather. It's raining nets and bolts, and they're piercing down from the sky. Wow. I just wish I could get it for longer than that lightning bolt to the second, but <laughs> we can't have it all now, can we? I guess not, dear, but it Jimmy. sounds pretty exciting. Maybe it'll keep raining real hard if he hears me out there. All right. Pray for hail, too. Why I'm not? I'm praying. I'm praying. Let's hope you get more than half an inch of rain, Kim. <laughs> I'm hoping for the big 10 inches of rain. Wow. Now how bad we need rain oh. in California. <laughs> Kim wants a monsoon. I'm conserving my water, though. All right, Kimmy, we love your show. Love yours, too. Bye. And that's all the time we have. 
Thank God. <laughs> you know, Doctor, you never told us what your forecast is. Uh, What's your forecast? I would have to say occasional showers. Oh. Yeah. All right. This has been Girl Talk with the good Dr. Tony Grant on 101 KGBFM. And remember, girls, we love you. Take care. Bye-bye. KGB. Good morning, KGB. Hey there. Hey there. Is this Dave? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yes. Guess who this is? Earl. Uh, Earl. Uh, Earl. Uh, Earl. That's my name, my friend. Don't wear it out. <laughs> You got your Shelly Dunn down there, too, I know that. I heard the newscast. That's right. I heard the newscast. And you know something? I don't go for these modern terminologies of your female species like your babes and your chicks and your wahinis. <laughs> your wahinis. I, I think that's demeaning, so call me old-fashioned, but I hear you're a pretty good-looking broad down there, Shelly. <laughs> that's very kind pretty of you, good sir. good-looking broad. <laughs> Keep your hands to yourself, though, Miss Dunn. I've been married for 23 years, young lady. Not a problem. And my bride, Helen, and I, live in the same house that we did when we first met. Mm -hmm. Of course, Helen's parents can't wait for us to get the hell out of there. <laughs> huh? But that's yeah. not the reason I called you there, my friend. Oh. I called in reference to your thousand dollar Thursday there. Oh, yeah. I know you're about to play the song any sec. I know how KGB thinks. But just remember this over there. Money can't buy you love, my friend. Can't no. buy you love, but it can buy you one heck of a gift certificate down at Pacers. <laughs> I'll tell you that. I'll tell you that. Love your show, you know what I mean? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Huh? Yes. Uh, that's yes. what I'm talking about. Good morning! 737 with the Dawn Patrol, and let's go live via satellite to Hollywood. Jules Hypenstein joins us. Uh, and she has some uh, stories about... What? Uh, she? I'm sorry. Oh. Start. I am a man. I'm sorry. I am not some perverted jerk. I'm a person. I'm a man. He has... I have a wife and three beautiful children. I am a man. I am a... Oh. Oh, I guess I shouldn't get so upset. Yeah, okay. I'm sorry I flared. <laughs> Tell us what's going on in Hollywood. Rock and roll bad boy Axel Rose of Guns N' Roses has been arrested in Los Angeles for hitting a neighbor over the head with a wine bottle. But at least Axel has taste. The bottle was smashed at room temperature. <laughs> And it was, oh, nice. And yeah. it was a 1983 Napa Valley Cabernet Sauvignon. And you oh. know, Dave and Shelley, the 83 Cabernet goes very well with scalp. Oh. Kevin Costner will star as Amadeus Mozart in Dances with Wolfgang. <laughs> Yesterday, GQ magazine announced that Julia Roberts, the gorgeous one, will be on the, the first woman ever to appear alone on GQ's cover. Hubba, wow. hubba, hubba. The editor said that the cover represents, quote, Every man's fantasy, unquote. And sure enough, on the cover, Julie Roberts is holding a six-pack and a pizza. So that's, that's just a few of the things that are happening in Hollywood. I wanted to pass them on early to you. Oh, yeah. A pepperoni pie and a six-pack of Schlitz. And Julia Roberts. How can I get better than that? At 610, you've been listening to the latest from Hollywood via satellite from Jules Hypenstein on the 101 KGBFM. Thanks a lot there, Jules. Unless, of course, it was raw, Julia. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Love your show. You're fantastic. <laughs> On Friday mornings, Dave Rickards always likes to figure out a way to get some lucky Dawn Patrol listener the day off, usually under the alias of Nicaragua. Are you ready? Sure. Now, what's the name of the place uh, you work? Hilltop Tire Center. And what do you do there? Um, bookkeeper, accountant type person. All right, John, I'm going to do all the talking, all right? Okay. All right, buddy. And you be prepared to talk if I need you, okay? Sure. Here we go. Can you hear okay, John? Yes, I can. Okay. Good morning, Hilltop Tire Accounting. Yeah, this is uh, United Airlines In-Flight Services. Uh, I have an urgent call from uh, Captain Aragua. Can I patch that through to you, please? Uh, who is it for? Uh, the accounting department. All right. All right, please stand by. Okay, go ahead, ma'am. This is Hilltop Tire. Uh, hello, this is Captain Aragua calling from the captain's chair of a Boeing 767 currently climbing through 40,000 feet over the Pacific Ocean. Who is this I'm speaking with, please? This is Janice in the business office. Janice, a pleasure to speak with you. Thank you, Captain. Uh, give me just one second here. Excuse me. Ladies and gentlemen, right outside your window right now, you'll see the Galapagos Islands. 
And in just a few minutes, we'll be climbing to our cruising altitude of 45,000 feet, and the stewardesses will be bringing some cocktails by. Nice to have you with us on United Airlines. Excuse me, Janice. Yes, sir. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I had a little business to take care of there. We have an employee of yours on board this morning. I believe his name is John Mahaffey. Are you familiar with this gentleman? Yes, we have John. He's part-time employee. John Mahaffey. I'm not sure if you're aware of this, but John Mahaffey is currently attending Grossmont College and is the star quarterback of the Grossmont football team. Uh, we're currently flying to Honolulu, Hawaii for the Pro Bowl football game. Maybe you're aware that Joe Montana uh, was injured uh, a couple weeks ago and has been called out of the game. John has been called in as the third string quarterback on standby, is with me right now in the cockpit, was hurried up last night by NFL Commissioner Paul Tagliabue, and asked to be on the flight to get to Honolulu in case he's needed for the Pro Bowl. He's with me here in the cockpit, asked me to make a phone call to let you know that he won't be in today. Oh, God, this is too much. I know. It's pretty, uh, it, it, it's pretty cool for us. We're pretty excited about it. Oh, well, this is fantastic. Would you like to say hi to John? I'd love to. Here you go, John. Just a second. <laughs> Hello? Hey, John. Janice, how you doing? I'm fine, thank you. How are you? Oh, good. I You're did. on the way to Hawaii? Yeah, it looks like I'm not going to be able to make it today. <laughs> That's fantastic. Bonnie, they come here quick. I want you to talk to John. He's in the cockpit on a United Airlines on the way to Hawaii. Come here. <laughs> Hold on just a second. <laughs> You're not going to be working tomorrow, huh? Oh, hi, Bonnie. <laughs> hi, John. Where are no, you? It looks like I can't make it today. <laughs> Excuse me, John, I need the phone back. Oh, Hello, Bonnie. Yes. I'm sorry, we're about to be cut off by our airtime. We have incoming traffic that needs uh, use of the radio. Uh, but uh, just wanted to get that message through to you, and we appreciate your cooperation. This is Captain Nicaragua. Thanks for being with us on United Airlines this morning. Okay, thank you. All right, nice speaking with you. Bye. All right, bye-bye now. There you go, you've got it. I don't believe they went for that one. <laughs> Holy moly. You know, if I, I know them, they, they probably did actually believe it. Oh, I'm sure they did. <laughs> they bought it. Well, enjoy your weekend. <laughs> Thank you very much. All right, pal, love your show. You too. Bye-bye. We'll see you. Good morning. And I'm buying a stairway to heaven. Uh, it's Robert Plant on the phone this morning. How are you, Robert? Hi, this is Vern. Oh. How are you? Pretty good. How you doing this morning, Vern? What's going on? Oh, not too much. What are you up to today? Big plans for the day? Well, I'm just going to stay in my room. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know. Anything else? I'll play with my fish. Yeah. Like, you know, fishes and stuff like that. <laughs> Anything else? Well, I'm going to tape record your show like Shh, I do every no, day. No, no, no. Hey, hey, ho. What, 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 Nick what? Son. <laughs> Nick's on that. <laughs> What do you mean? You don't talk about doing that. Taping the radio is a federal offense. What are you talking about? Just don't say that you do that anymore. You could get in big trouble. I'm taping your show. That's don't. all. Vern. I'm taping, I'm taping your show. Like I do. I have taped your show every day. I have all the Don Paul shows on tape and stuff like that. You can't be started. responsible for I'm, what happens. Well, I'm, but I've been doing it for years, you know. And, oh, wait a minute. My mommy never knocks. What's she doing here? Well, Barney, what, what are you doing here and stuff like that? I mean, Violation of section TDK UDXL 90. <laughs> Head the radio broadcast off the air. Well, do you have... Oh, they can't get me, Dave. Watch. Do you have a search warrant, officer? <laughs> yeah, I got permission from your mom. <laughs> uh, my, my mommy is a snitch. Wow. Hands against the wall, fella. I got a cuff you. Mm-hmm. Golly, that feels kind of neat. <laughs> oh, no. All right, all right. Uh, we've got a Come on, up, fella. Just hang on, Dave. I'm going to take his bed to see if he pulled off the mattress tag. <laughs> all right. Oh, my gosh. Rubber sheets. <laughs> <laughs> hang on, Dave. Vern wants to say something. Here, hold the phone right. up to him. Okay, Vernie. I think Barney's really neat. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, my 
My name is Pierre Larson and I am Miss Denmark. I am so in love with Cookie Chen Sua Randolph. Oh my. Go bottom, cut bottom, and hello again, everybody. The Magic Man is back. Irvin Magic Johnson, who was knocked out Sunday when he got accidentally kicked and banged his head on the floor. He was back in action last night. 22 points, 13 assists, as the Lakers won their 16th straight game, 116-102 over the Clippers. Magic suffered some temporary amnesia last Sunday, but now he has forgotten he had amnesia. Yes, he forgot he had amnesia, which is a very heavy concept. Something like that famous riddle, if a tree falls in the forest and nobody's around, did a beaver do it? Oh. <laughs> At least I, I think that's how it goes. <laughs> Elsewhere in the National Bear! You mean Cookie's coming back? <laughs> sure, everything comes back. Skateball Association! Seven games were played last night. Total number of times players said, Come on, ref, I didn't even touch the guy. 375. Oh. Nice job, Victor Kayam, the owner of the New England Patriots and the Remington Shaver Company. Well, he spoke at an all-male sports banquet the other night and cracked a joke about Lisa Olson, the female reporter who was harassed in the New England Patriots locker room last season. Kayam asked his audience, What do the Iraqis and Lisa Olson have in common. They both irritate President Bush. No, they've oh. both seen Patriot missiles up close. Whoa. Nice piece of work, Mr. Kayam. Don't expect too many Lady Remingtons to sell this week. Hope you salt and pepper your foot, Victor, because it's been spending a lot of time in your mouth lately. <laughs> I mean, I always keep a, a spice rack right here next to the microphone, just in case. <laughs> Only needed it 12 times so far this week. <laughs> and we've all heard of players' unions, right? Well, it was 25 years ago that legendary union boss Jimmy Hoffa first suggested pro athletes should form unions, and at the time, Hoffa's suggestion was laughed at and not considered at all. But today, as we all know, Hoffa is a cornerstone of the industry. In fact, he's a cornerstone of Giant Stadium uh, in Meadowlands, New Jersey, right near Gate C on the east side of the stadium. In other sports, David. Check out the chick on a prime tick tonight. Oh, my at 6.23 and 16 seconds, this is the 101 KGBFM Sports Network. Oh, my. Dude, what's going on? This is Neil down at Pacific Beach. <laughs> hey, what's happening, buddy? What's going on? You are. Dig. Oh, my. Oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> hey, my friend Lee wants to talk to you, dude. Okay. You know Lee, right? He's like 50 years old and really uh -huh. smart. That smart guy yeah. you hang with. Cool. Okay. Hey, Lee, they want to talk to you. He's a rocket scientist. scientist. Oh, <laughs> I'm sure, yeah. Hello and what not. Is this the radio man? Yeah, Lee, what's on your mind? You know what I'm doing tonight and so forth. I hesitate to wonder. My woman is having another one of her specials tonight on ABC and what not. Oh, uh -huh. yes. That's right. Barbara Walters. That's right. The Barbara Walters special. The best looking woman in the world, etc. <laughs> God, I'd like to bring her Hey, Lee, hey, watch it. Tonight she's going to interview Julia Roberts and Ooh. John Goodman and what not. Ooh. But I'll tell you one thing, Radio Man, if John Goodman, that big old John Madden dude from the Roseanne Show, if he makes a move on Barbara, I'm going to jump right into the TV set and beat the stuffing out of him and so forth. You know, actually, I've seen the commercials for this on TV, and they uh -huh. kiss, they kiss oh! her. Lee? Don't tell me that, Radio Man. <laughs> they embrace, and they actually do kiss during the uh, episode. It's better be on the cheek, Radio Man. <laughs> Which one? <laughs> <laughs> You've upset him, Dave. No. <laughs> no tongues. I think, like, Lee is, like, really upset right now, dude. <laughs> let, let, me, let me talk to him. I was just kidding. Please. Hey, I was just kidding. And then that pretty woman actress, Julia Roberts. There's a hot babe. Pretty woman. Ha! Huh. Oh, <laughs> you don't, you're not into her, huh? I pity Julia Roberts sitting there on the couch next to Barbara Walters. Oh, yeah. She'll look like a newborn goat next to the best fucking <laughs> woman in the world. Gone! And if John Goodman lays a hand on her, I'm going to jump right through that thing. Does he have some blood pressure medicine? Really upset, dude. <laughs> Isn't he cool? Wow. I think I'm starting to dig goats. <laughs> See you, pal. Bye. Please tell me about the joke. Got to hear the joke of the day. Won't you let me know the joke right now? Thanks again to John Crowley of Redondo Beach, California, for his three quickies. 
that take place at a bar. All of them do. First one, a gorilla walks into a bar. Bartender says, what'll it be, pal? The gorilla says, a shot of Jack Daniels, please. Well, the bartender, seeing an unusual opportunity, says, that'll be 50 bucks. The gorilla says nothing but slaps a 50 spot on the counter. <laughs> Strong guy. Yeah. And after a moment, the bartender says, you know, we don't get too many gorillas in here. The gorilla says, yeah, at 50 bucks a shot, you won't see me again here either. <laughs> Where in that same bar, mm -hmm. a grasshopper walks into a bar. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> Bartender says, hey, it's a grasshopper. Hey, we have a drink named after you. Grasshopper says, really? You have a drink named Leonard? <laughs> Finally, in that same bar, yeah. where they have a very rich clientele, two psychics walk into a bar. The second one says, I'll have the same. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Oh. Yeah. Hey, folks, 101 KGB-FM. We're live at San Diego's Jack Murphy Stadium. McDonald's is providing the, uh, the hot coffee and the Danish, and they're, they're, they're working like busy little beavers over there. We sure do appreciate it. Mm -hmm. So stop by and get some of your free breakfast before the... Uh... Hello. Oh, come on in. Well, good morning, oh. Don Patrol. Well, as I live and breathe, it's our deputy program director, Barney Fife. Yeah, folks. come in. Don't wear it out. <laughs> <laughs> What's happening, Barney? Well, I just thought now would be a good time to swear everyone in. Oh, I official think Sky yeah. Show deputy is what yeah. it is. Excellent idea, yes. All right, everybody, we're gonna stand up. Come on, let's everybody, move it. Everybody, to your feet. What do we have, about 2,000 here, 3,000? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. What I want you to do is repeat after me. Raise your right hand, please. Raise your right hand, please. <laughs> Hip it. All right, here we go. I state your name. I state your name. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. To attend the KGB Sky Show tonight. To attend the KGB Sky Show tonight. And yell out, oh, wow, at least 12 times. <laughs> and yell out. Incredible KGB Sky Show fireworks and rock and roll synchronization. Yeah. Yeah. Good enough. Give yourself a hand. You're all done. Yeah. We've had rock and roll for breakfast from the ones who've always left us laughing and smiling. Oh. From the sports to the weather to every current endeavor to being back stay together with a heartbeat of rock and roll. You better be waking up. Waking up with all the Every year around Thanksgiving, 101 KGB FM puts on the Foodathon to raise food donations for Father Joe Carroll and the St. Vincent de Paul Center to feed San Diego's homeless and hungry. The Dawn Patrol stays on the air for 30 straight hours and are joined by numerous celebrities and friends like Joe Walsh. Hey, how you doing? How you doing? Hey. Hey, we got a, we got a little present for you here from San Diego. Are you ready? Yeah. Listen to this. One, two, three. How you doing? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I like that. So how you doing? Good. Hey, is Chainsaw there? Chainsaw, where are you, buddy? He's walking around someplace. Here he is. Hang on, he's coming in. Joe, Ben! Hey, Chainsaw! What's happening, Rocky Mountain? Hey, I know your cousin, Weed Eater. <laughs> hey, this is Steven Tyler. Round up your canned goods and non-perishable food items. Come down and walk this way to the KGB FM Studios. Let's get any money in trying, shall we? <laughs> Calling New York. <laughs> Hello. Hello, who's this? Hello. Eddie. Yo. KGB Radio, we're in the air. Hey, what's happening? Who was that little <laughs> angel that answered the phone? That's my daughter. She is uh, a sweetheart. That's me, uh, she's got me looking at Lady at the Tramp for the 157th <laughs> time. <laughs> you guys are on a marathon? You don't know what a marathon is. <laughs> well, hey, this is a great cause, man. You know, everybody needs food, especially around the holidays. And I think 16 tons is a great, that's a great goal. Well, we're trying to get there because, you know, we want to play that great Tennessee Ernie Ford song. 16 tons. Yeah. Oh. What do you got? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I have the envelope, please. 
36,117.8 pounds. Three, two, one. It is 12 o'clock. It's been 30 hours since we started this. This is what we've been waiting for. People say a man is made out of mud A poor man's made out of muscle and blood Muscle and blood and skin and bones A mind that's weak and a back that's strong He loads 16 tons What do you get? Another day older and deeper in debt St. Peter, don't you call me cause I can't go Oh yeah I So oh, yeah. Speak to me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Amen. To the company store. So ends the best of the Dawn Patrol rookie season cassette. And go ahead, feel good that the profits from your purchase will benefit the Navy Marine Corps Relief Fund, which provides assistance to the families of American service personnel. I'm Jonathan Blair, inviting you to join Dave, Shelley, and the Chainsaw weekday mornings from 5.30 to 9 a.m. and on Saturdays from 7 to 10 when I host the best of the Dawn Patrol on 101 KGB FM. Till then, these are our last few words. Love yourself. Oh, that's right. Oh, well, fuck it. Yeah, I know. Well, yeah, I know. Fuck it. Yeah, okay, go ahead. <laughs> Why you get me involved? You know, you, you, you know, you can, huh? Come on, you know, I mean, uh, you're at the radio station. <laughs>